Hi friends, welcome to lecture 77 in our helicopter dynamics course and today I'm going to talk about blade stall. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now stall is a phenomena which takes place because of massive flow separation. And stall on a helicopter blade is characterized by high control system loads and helicopter vibration. So essentially stall is something you want to mitigate and not have as much as possible. So it is not something which is desirable. Now, pitch loads can increase dramatically due to stall in high speed flights. And in forwards flight, stall takes place primarily on the retreating blade producing high torsional loads. So these are some of the manifestations of stall in helicopter flight situations. And we look at how the stall comes about and possible ways to mitigate stall. So if we look at pitch link loads with respect to the flight speed, we see that there is a general trend of these loads going up as the forward speed goes up. Now, if you all remember, the pitch link is essentially the part of the helicopter rotor blade near the hub where the control system is connected to the pitch motion. So this particular part is where the loads act and the stall is especially important for the pitch link loads. Now stall in a hovering rotor creates a limit cycle torsional oscillation of the blade and this is also known as stall flutter. So what would happen is that if you take the rotor disc toward the retreating side, you encounter lower velocities. And because the velocities are low here, the angle has to be higher in order to generate the same amount of lift. And that is why you have the possibility of a stall on the retreating blade. Remember the rotor is going like this. So on this side, the speed is higher on this side, the speed is lower, and so there is a possibility of stall on the retreating blade. Now, whenever you consider a rotor in forward flight, as V goes down, theta or the corresponding alpha, which is there at the blade section, has to go up so that the lift goes up. And therefore, what happens is as this angle keeps going up, finally, the angle exceeds something like 12 to 15 degrees. And that's the point at which you start getting stall. Now, it's difficult to predict stall in complex 3D situations, but you can predict it in 2D situations from various measurements which have been obtained and also from CFD. So we look at some of those characteristics. So let's look at the physics of stall. Essentially, you have an airfoil section, and in most situations, you have the flow going through in a nice manner on top of this airfoil section. So basically, the loading looks something like this, and there is a rapid acceleration of the flow here to max suction pre pressure, and then the flow slowly decelerates in most cases and goes backward onto the airfoil body. Now to maintain low drag and high lift, flow on this airfoil must remain smooth and attached to the surface. Or the flow deceleration must be very gradual for the flow to remain attached to the surface. So these are important parameters in case we do not want the flow to separate. And what happens at sufficiently high alpha stall will take place because deceleration will be too large for the boundary layer to support and the flow will separate from this airfoil surface. So that is how the flow separation takes place. And as the flow departs from the airfoil section, you essentially get this stall phenomena. So typically the stall takes place at an angle of around 12 degrees. So this corresponds to CL value of about 1.2. And stall is highly dependent on factors such as the Reynolds number, the Mach number, and airfoil shape. Now, there's 
not too much we can do about these two factors but the airfoil shape is something we can do a lot about and so people try to play around with the airfoil shape and various airfoil sections have been designed which delay the possibility of flow separation and therefore try to mitigate the effect of stall now the key thing to remember from this video are these diagrams relating cl to alpha cd to alpha and cn to alpha and you can clearly see here that cl will go up like this and then start falling so this is a linear region and then there is a stall here somewhere around 12 degrees or 15 degrees and then there is a dramatic fall in the lift coefficient so most of the time we want to work on this part of this curve here so we want to work from say alpha 0 to 12 degree now this is a symmetric airfoil so this curve is going through the zero point now what happens to cd which is the drag coefficient is that it's more or less constant till this stall point and then it suddenly starts going up so there is a huge increase in drag following the stall point which is about 12 degrees as far as cm is concerned it will generally be zero or slightly negative if you have a cambered section and then this will go down here so there will be a nose down pitching moment due to the rearward shift in the center of pressure and this cm is actually a very deleterious effect as far as helicopters are concerned because it's going to generate a large pitching moment after stall and this pitching moment is going to create various torsional loads and so on so these are diagrams which you need to remember in general so you want to stay in this region before stall but unfortunately as happens in real life that stall is a physical phenomena so there are situations where you are going to encounter it so what's going to happen with stall the stall of the plate is going to lead to fall in the rotor thrust sharp increase in the profile power profile power is going up because cd is going up remember profile power is directly proportional to cd the equation sigma cd 0 by 8 should be there from power then high flap wise and cord wise bending stresses are also going to result the center of pressure shifts which takes place due to flow separation and this produces high torsional and control system loads so there are two main conditions for helicopter blade stall and these are high thrust and high speed now when both these conditions are present the stall possibility becomes very large but even if one of these conditions are present there is a likely possibility of stall now as these conditions become more and more important alpha on the blades will increase and so that's likely to lead to the stall situation so in high speed forward flight we already know that the dynamic pressure will go up on the advancing side because remember here the forward speed is getting summed up with the rotation speed so on the retreating side the dynamic pressure is going to go down because here the forward speed is in the reverse direction of the rotation speed so there is going to be a roll moment produced by this imbalance in the lift now to balance this moment the advancing side is going to have a low alpha and the retreating side is going to have a high alpha and as the speed or thrust increases stall happens on the retreating side of the main rotor so that's a very important factor to remember and these are issues which limit the maximum forward speed of a helicopter so whenever you have a helicopter rotor it cannot fly beyond a certain speed because as i've mentioned before you start encountering compressibility at the blade tip here in the advancing region and also this differential becomes larger and larger and so you start encountering retreating blade stall so these two things are going to impact your helicopter forward speed possibility because as you have this retreating blade stall there are going to be severe loads generated on the pitch link the control system and so on and these are going to cause vibration the pilot is not going to be able to fly much faster than this so that's the end of lecture 77 and i will see you in my next video